In this video, we will be talking about the vermiform appendix. It is called vermiform because it looks like a worm. This structure arises from the posteromedial wall of the cecum. It arises just 2 cm below the ileocecal orifice. So, if this is the cecum, and this is the ileum, The base of the appendix is just 2 cm below the ileocecal orifice. So this will be the base of the appendix. Now the base of the appendix remains fixed but the tip can project to any direction. The probable positions of the appendix is the most IMP question for your university exams. But before discussing that, let's discuss about the dimensions of the appendix. The length of the appendix is 2 to 20 centimeters and 9 centimeters on average. The width or the diameter is 5 mm. So you can see that the lumen of the appendix is very narrow and it often gets obliterated during the mid adult life. The appendix of the children is longer than adults. So the children have longer appendix. This is all about the dimensions and the introduction of the vermiform appendix. Now let's discuss the probable positions of the appendix. The first position is paracolic. Here the appendix moves upwards and turns to the right. This is called the paracolic position or the 11 o'clock position. This is called the paracolic position or the 11 o'clock position. Now the next is retrocolic. Here, the appendix moves upwards behind the colon. So, it is called retrocolic or the 12 o'clock position. This is the retrocolic position or the 12 o'clock position. Now, the third is the 2 o'clock position or the splenic position. Here, the appendix moves upwards and turns towards the left, pointing to the spleen. So, it is called splenic. Here, the appendix can pass above the ileum or it can go behind the ileum. Based of these two probabilities, it can be pre-ileal where it passes in front of the ileum or it can be post-ileal where it passes behind the ileum. Here it is important to note that the post-ileal position is the most dangerous position. The next is the 3 o'clock position where the appendix passes towards the left side. It is also called the promontric position because it appears to be pointing towards the sacral promontory. Now the next is the 4 o'clock position where it descends into the pelvis. So it is also called the pelvic position. It is the second commonest position and appears in 30% of the population. So the most common was the retrocolic which occurred in 65% of the population and the second common is the pelvic or the 4 o'clock position which occurs in 30% of the population. Now the last is the 6 o'clock position. This is the 6 o'clock position. Here the appendix lies below the cecum. So it is also called sub -cecal. And it points towards the inguinal ligament. So it is also called mid-inguinal position. So this is all about the positions of the appendix. Let's revise it once again. The first is the paracolic. This is the paracolic position where the appendix moves upwards and then turns towards the right. It is also called the 11 o'clock position. Now the second is the retrocolic. This is the retrocolic position. Here, the appendix moves upwards right behind the cecum or the colon. So, it is also called retrocolic or retrocecal position or the 12 o'clock position. The third is the splenic position. These two in the blue color are the splenic positions. They are also called the 2 o'clock position. It can be pre-ileal if the appendix passes in front of the ileum or post-ileal 
if the appendix passes behind the ileum the posterior is the most dangerous the next is the promontric position it is also called the three o'clock position here the appendix points towards the sacral promontory the next is the pelvic or the four o'clock position it is also called four o'clock position here the appendix descends in the pelvis and the last is the six o'clock position or the subsecal or mid inguinal position this is the six o'clock position or the subsecal because here the appendix lies below the cecum it is also called mid inguinal because it points towards the inguinal ligament so this is all about the positions of the cecum it is a very important questions for your university exams now let's talk about the appendicular orifice it lies 2 cm below the iliocecal orifice it is often guarded by a mucosal fold called the valve of gerlach now the surface marking of the appendicular orifice is just 2 cm from where the transtubercular plane and the right lateral plane meet so in this figure this is the transtubercular plane and this is the right lateral plane and just 2 cm below their intersection this is the intersection of the two planes and right 2 cm below it there is the base of the appendix this is the base of the appendix now the next point is that whenever a person is suffering from acute appendicitis the macburney's point is the point of maximum tenderness which means that whenever you touch the patient on the macburney's point it will elicit pain in the patient the position of the macburney's point is often asked in the viva questions let's see that in this figure this is the line joining the right anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus this is the right anterior superior iliac spine and this is the umbilicus and this is the line joining both of them now the lateral 1/3 and the medial 2/3 at their junction lies the macburney's point so we can say that the macburney's point lies at the junction of lateral 1/3 and medial 2/3 of the line joining the right anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus now let's talk about the peritoneal relations of the appendix this is not very important but let's just see it in brief so the appendix is suspended by a small triangular fold of peritoneum which is called the meso appendix or the appendicular mesentery this mesentery covers the appendix and then passes upwards behind the ileum and after passing behind the ileum it gets attached to the left layer of the mesentery now let's talk about the blood supply of the appendix the appendix is supplied by the appendicular artery which is the branch of the lower division of the iliocecal artery the next is the nerve supply the sympathetic innervation of the appendix is done by thoracic 9 and thoracic 10th segment and the parasympathetic innervation is done by the nerves from the vagus nerve the referred pain from the appendix is felt on the umbilicus because the umbilicus is also supplied by the 10th thoracic nerve that is t now let's talk about the lymphatic drainage of the appendix the lymph from the appendix is mostly drained into the iliocecal nodes so most of the lymph from the appendix will be drained into the iliocecal nodes but some can also be drained into the appendicular nodes which are situated in the meso appendix they are situated in the meso appendix right so mostly they will drain into the iliocecal nodes and the rest will drain into the appendicular nodes now lastly let's talk about the clinical anatomy of the appendix the first is the appendicitis appendicitis is the inflammation of the appendix
In this kind of situation, the appendix is to be surgically removed and that removal process is known as appendicectomy. Second is when there is acute appendicitis, firstly the pain is felt around the umbilicus. Pain is first felt at umbilicus. And this is the referred pain because both the umbilicus and the appendix are supplied by the T10 segment. Now, as the inflammation of the appendix increases, the pain is then felt on the McBurney's point, which is around the right iliac fossa. So, firstly, the pain is felt around the umbilicus, and then as the inflammation increases, the pain is felt on the right iliac fossa around the McBurney's point. The next is the McBurney's point. As we have already discussed earlier that this point is the site of maximum tenderness and it is located at the junction of lateral one third and medial two third of the line joining the right anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus. Now the next point is that during the examination during the examination of the appendicitis Whenever you touch around the iliac fossa or the McBurney's point, three things can be noted. First is hyperesthesia. Second is tenderness around the McBurney's point. And the third is muscle guard and rebound tenderness. So whenever you examine a patient of acute appendicitis, these three things can be noted that is hyperesthesia, which is excessive physical sensitivity, especially of the skin around that area. Second is tenderness around the McBurney's point. And the third is muscle guard and rebound tenderness. The meaning of muscle guard is that the muscles around that area are partially contracted. And rebound tenderness means that a sensation of pain is felt when the pressure is suddenly removed. So these three things are the sign of acute appendicitis whenever you examine the patient. The next point is appendicular dyspepsia. So, dyspepsia means indigestion. So, this appendicular dyspepsia means indigestion due to appendicitis. Now, during chronic appendicitis, so whenever a patient is suffering from chronic appendicitis, the infected lymph passes to the subpyloric lymph nodes and irritates the pylorus. Which results into dyspepsia. The most important topic from this is the positions of the appendix and the clinical anatomy.